Welcome to Resurrection Bay Baptist Church. Let's all stand up on your hymn book, hymn number 514. Hymn number 514. In my heart there rings a melody. Let's sing all three verses. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. It's a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary. For he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, rings a melody of love. Will be my endless theme in glory. Angels, I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony when the courts of heaven ring. In my heart, there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart, there rings a melody. Amen. Hymn number 506. Back just a few pages. Hymn number 506. I will sing of my Redeemer. We'll sing the first, the second, and the last verse. I will sing of my Redeemer and His one love to me. On the cruel cross He suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh sing of my Redeemer, who with his blood he purchased me. And on the cross he sealed my pardon, he paid the debt and made me free. On the second, I will tell the wondrous story, how my lost estate to save. In his boundless love and mercy, he the ransom freely gave. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer, who with his blood he purchased me. And on the cross he sealed my pardon, he paid the debt and made me free. I will sing of my Redeemer and His heavenly love to me. He from death to life hath brought me, Son of God, with Him to be. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer, who with His blood He purchased me. And on the cross he sealed my pardon. He paid the debt and made me free. And all God's people said, Well, maybe we need to build an ark, all right? And all God's people said, Isn't it good to be here inside, not Amen. outside tonight? Amen. It's what a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for being faithful and coming out tonight. Let's open in a word of prayer, and uh, we appreciate all that you do. Brother Car Kyler, Carler, Kyler Barlow, could you take us to prayer if you could, sir? Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. I want to thank you for being here tonight. It's a privilege to have you back um, Sunday morning. We'll be a little little numbers down. I know a lot of people are headed out of town for the weekend, so be praying as people travel. Um, there will be a live stream for those that are able to tune in 
that would be great. But for those of you that can be here, we're still having church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and looking forward to what God's going to do this week in the house of the Lord. We're going to have Brother Barlow come and lead us in some more song. But before he does, does anyone have something good that God's done you just want to share? And uh, just something you can't, you can't but just give God glory for today. Yes, ma'am. And you're giving God the glory for them being forgetful. Amen. Amen. Someone else? Yes, Miss Beth. Praise the Lord. Someone else? Something you're thankful for? Yes, sir. Okay, I can't understand anything you said. Open up, speak loud. The Lord died on your cross for your sin. Amen. Thank you, buddy. Yes, sir. Amen. You look like you lost some weight over the week. The leftovers are all gone, I understand. Someone else? All right. We'll have Brother Barlow come and listen to some song. All right. You can remain seated for this one. Hymn number 518. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Hymn number 518. Since I saw. Redeemed, hymn number 521. We'll sing the first, the second, and the last verse. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 
redeem his child and forever I am on the second redeemed and so happy in Jesus no language my rapture can tell I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell I'm redeemed 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 by the blood of the Lamb redeemed redeemed his child and forever I am on the last I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night I'm redeemed 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 by the blood of the lamb redeemed redeemed his child and forever I am Thank you, great singing at this time. Myself, Crystal, and Colton are going to sing. time you ever heard that song. I've never heard that before. I would like to hear it again. Thanks. Chains 
of the past are broken at last. I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm redeemed by the mercy of Jesus. I'm raised at the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How good I want I've received nothing but goodness. I've tested and tasted your grace. I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm redeemed by the mercy of Jesus. I'm amazed at the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I've got Jesus. How could I want more? Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed to your classes tonight. Take our Bibles and go to Mark chapter number 1. Mark chapter number 1. you ever have one of those days you started off and you were praying, Lord, there just isn't enough time uh, to get everything done. I needed to get done today and uh, ask you to be praying for a fellow that's got a test tomorrow. I've been training him the last couple weeks and uh, it's kind of added to my stress. I had a mountain of paperwork to get done for him today for the state and uh, so if you'd be praying for him but uh, then with everything going with this football thing and then the church, you know, just the church, the normal stuff that I normally do, um, I just felt uh, this morning woke up early kind of panicked about all the stuff that I had to get done today. And it, and it had to be done not tomorrow, but today. And I got to say, you know, we were giving the Lord praise a while ago. It just seemed like everything just clicked. I mean, I, in all the years I've done paperwork. I Normally I have to do it 16 times and uh, and it went through the first time, not, not a problem at all. And this paperwork I've been waiting on uh, was here today. There was just stuff that uh, just happened. It was just, just like clockwork. I even got a nap uh, right before church and about an hour nap. And I was just like, I think I got about an hour, at least 20 minutes, but uh, it was, it's just been good. And I'm thankful for that. And um Thankful for all that God's done. Speaking of the football program, if anybody would like to be a part of that, a referee, we need some more referees and need some more uh, volunteers if you'd like to take part in that. Um, it'll be uh, this week, uh, Thursday night will be a long night, but other than that, it'll be just one game every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, it'll be, they'll start at six, hopefully done by eight o'clock. So um, if you would like to be a part of that refereeing, please see me and um, I'll try to bring you up to date. We're going to meet uh, with uh, Nate Smith tonight and a couple guys after church and try to figure, finalize what kind of football we're playing versus uh, what, we're, it, what we're trying to teach. So anyhow, it was good. It was a good crowd last night. And uh, thank you for all of you that volunteered and helped and are involved. In Mark chapter 1, verse number 16, um, the Bible says, Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew. Andrew was the disciple of John, the Bible says, his brother casting a net in the sea, for they were fishers. And they said unto, and Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I'll make you to become fishers of men. We've been looking at the subject of fasting and prayer, and why would we fast and pray? And, and we're talking about going a little further for the Lord. And, and, and last week we, we came down through this first part and we were talking about and Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you to become. 
understand, follow me, to become fishers of men. It was the act of growth. It, was, it wasn't just something that, boom, it happened, but Jesus would work in the life of His disciples, and the disciples would grow in their Christian walk till we find them in Acts uh, just full of boldness and full of power. And you say, well, that was all the Holy Ghost. And I know the Holy Ghost played a lot of it, but God also worked in their life uh, to trust in the Word, to trust in the Holy Ghost, and let God do what God can do through them. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 8, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And I, I can't help but think tonight that in our day and age, God's looking for some people that He can show Himself strong through. We need people who are willing to pray. We need people who are willing to fast. We need people who are willing to step up. We need people who are willing to say, God, I, I want not just a Christian eternity. I, not, I don't want just a Christian walk. I, I, I don't want just the same old thing for the next 50 years. But God, I want to continue to grow in my faith. I want you to increase and me to decrease. And we see that through the disciples' life. So as you go to Luke chapter number 5, I want you to see where we were last week. And the Bible says in verse number 1, it says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. I'm looking for that. Um, I want people to press upon us. I, I want the, the seats to be full. I, I want people to want to hear the word of God. Here's what I know. I know the majority of people don't understand the fact that they have a need. It's more necessary than their daily food. They have a need to hear the Word of God. They pressed upon Jesus to hear the Word of God, and He stood by the lake of Gethsemane, and Jesus saw two ships. And the Bible says, and he saw, uh, the, when He saw those two ships in verse number 2, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. And we've preached out of this passage before, but I want you to think about the reality of it is that these two ships tonight, I'd like to picture them as two different vessels, two different churches, and I want you to see that the fishermen were gone out of them, and they weren't in the ships where they belonged. They weren't part of that, uh, of that ship. And what they were doing is a picture, I believe, of uh, of, of you know doing things on the outside and, and, and they get so busy wrapped up, but Jesus was looking for somebody in the ship to thrust out a little farther from the land, to, to be able to captain the ship, to be able to be used and, and, and understand they were over here, they were washing the nets and don't have time to see what I see in that, but look in verse number three. And as he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now I think it's amazing that we see the Lord thrusting out a little, and they, and they go a little ways, and they teach out of that ship. It's kind of amazing. Jonathan, if I can use you as an illustration here tonight, and uh, we're going to make this our ship. Okay? Can you row your boat? I know you can. I've used an illustration in Kenai one time. Now notice, as we look at Brother Jonathan, he's going to be Peter. Jesus says, this is a picture for us tonight. He says, I want you to thrust out a little bit. I want you to step out by faith. And as you step out by faith, I'm going to be in that ship, and I'm going to teach the Word through the ship. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I understand you don't have to be in a church building to hear the Word of God, but I want you to understand God uses the local New Testament church in this time period. And as He works through the church, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And He says, church, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. I want you to walk by faith, live by faith. The just shall live by, say it with me, Faith. And through faith, we, we see missionaries supported. Through faith, we see God do some amazing, abundantly above and beyond what we even think or ask. We thrust out a little bit by faith, and God's done some amazing things in this building, in this church, in our life, in our ministry. Most people, that's all the further we get in our experience with Jesus. We trust Him by faith. We're in the ship with Him. We, I mean, we're going to heaven if we die. We know Christ is our personal Savior. Bible's being taught. 
We have Sunday school classes. We have missionaries we support. And we're just going through the normal. But Jesus is training these disciples. And He says to him in the next part, He says, I want you to move from where you are, teaching the people that are here, me working through the ship right here, and I want the ship to go a little further. I want you to launch out into the deep. For me, there was a thought of faith there. I, I, I can be content saying, well, you know what? I'm just going to be faithful and launch out a little ways and, and trust. I can still see the shore. I can, I can still see the people. I, I can still get back. If I had to, I could. But he said, I want you to go out a little further. What I'm asking you to do is exercise your faith. I'm talking about going a little further than you've ever gone before. We've been talking about prayer and fasting, and I'd ask a couple different times, how many have ever prayed and fasted? And how many has ever went on a three-day fast before? And I understand a lot of you have fasted in the past, but I'm asking you, when's the last time you, you went a little, where God led you to go a little further by faith, a, a little further in your prayer, and believing that God is able. Can God do the impossible? Is anything too hard for God? What I'm saying is, is so many times, I, I don't know about you, but I find myself very content right there. Matter of fact, if I was right there on that side of the shore, I'd still throw up. No, if I was right there on the side of that shore, I would be comfortable. I could see land, Probably wouldn't be too comfortable if the waves got bad, but I'm saying I would be okay in that. But to go out a little further, the Lord spared me this year. I told Brother Garner, I said, okay, I got some patches to put on my ear after something like 15 years of not being on a boat. I want to try it. And so I went to a wedding on a boat. That worked good. We went on a cruise. That went good. And so I thought, I'm going to go fishing. And then his boat broke down. Praise the Lord. And, and I never had to go out. But I'm, I'm saying I didn't. It takes, it takes something for us to be willing to go a little further. Are you satisfied? You say, well, Brother Kelly, I'm supposed to be content. I understand the contentment side of your Christian walk. But I'm saying I want to do more for Jesus. I want God to stretch me. I want to live by faith and walk by faith and not by sight. It's easy to get so numb sitting right here. Matter of fact, if we'd be honest, we've been in this boat so long, we hear messages, stories, and they really don't prick our heart. The Word of God just doesn't stretch us anymore. There's not, I mean, we hear songs and it's not, I mean, it's just, you know, it was exciting. Here's Jesus coming. He says, let's get in the boat. Oh, let's go to church. And you, you get saved, you get excited, you're in the church. And then all of a sudden we become calloused, cold. I don't even want to say calloused. I would just say numb. Numb. I mean, we just become complacent, satisfying. We feel pretty good about ourselves because we know if we die today, heaven's our home. We know without a shadow of doubt, Jesus is in our boat. That's pretty exciting. We know without a shadow of doubt, hey, it's a great place to be. If you're not there, that's where you need to start. But I'm not talking to the Sunday morning crowd of trying to get people saved and come down the aisle. What I'm talking to is the church. I'm talking to the Sunday school teachers in here. I'm talking to the preachers in here. I'm talking to you as a child of God. Most of the people sitting here has been saved over 10 years. It's time we stretch our faith. When I approach the Word of God, I want the Word of God to speak. I want it to call out my name. I want God to show me His ways. I want Him to show me the area of my life that I've just become so numb. That I, and I'm not saying there ought to be some things you become used to in the things of God that ought to become habitual, but I don't want it to be lifeless. I don't want it to be motionless. I don't want it to be fruitless because I understand that as a child of God, the church of Jesus Christ ought to be producing fruit. 
And what happens is, is we just get so used to settling. Now watch the Bible here. Look, if you would, in verse number 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, notice he didn't say unto the crowd, they weren't ready for that. But I want you to notice later on, there's other people that go with him. But I want you to see here, he says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep. Now he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go from where you are now, and I want you to launch out into the deep. So go to the deep. No, take your your boat, son. You're going to sink. He's taking his boat. And so he's row, row, row in his boat. Now Jesus is still in the ship. He's still with him. Now go ahead, that's good. You can sit right there. Now he said this, I want you to launch out into the deep. He left from where he was at. Where are there still people on the shore? Shore. Where are there still people? I, I, without a shadow of a doubt, there were still... But he said, if you're going to grow, Peter, I'm going to get you to the place where I can get you to Pentecost. But he wasn't there yet. He wasn't ready for Pentecost yet. He wasn't ready for that next level. He wasn't ready to go from not being able to speak to one person to be able to speak to thousands of people. He had to first take steps of faith in his Christian growth. And when it comes to prayer, what I'm saying is that so many times I get used to my prayer life here. I have my time of prayer. I have, and, and, and there's a time where God wants to stretch you. He wants to stretch you in your prayer. How many believe there's times when God wants to stretch you in your giving? Now He stretches me by faith in my giving. How about your going? God wants to cause me to do something. Some of you have made mission trips and you've went places and you've went into other countries or you went into other states or other, or other villages and you got out of the normal sea of your ship and the comfortableness of it and you stepped out a little further. Jesus said, now launch out into the deep. And you'd say, but where are we going into the deep? What are we going to do when we get there? He said this. He said, now I want you to launch out into the deep and Peter... I want you to let down your nets. He said, I want you to let them all down. I want you to, out of the ship, let down your nets. Now, someone tell me tonight, what does letting down the nets do? Opportunity to catch what? Fish. If the nets are still in the ship, do you catch any fish? No. So the reality of it is, so many times we are this church here, we're out of our ship, we're over here cleaning our nets, and we're saying, oh, Jesus is so wonderful. Yes, He's so wonderful. He is so wonderful to me. God is so good. I'm on the winning side. How great Thou art, and how good God is. And I sure am glad I'm not like the world. This world's wicked. This world's vile. And Jesus is saying, I didn't send you into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Listen, do you understand? Jesus said, he didn't, or God said, He did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. It's not my job to sit in my ship and tell you how bad the world is. It's my job to get out into the world and let down my nets. What about our prayer life? Well, you know, this fasting thing, I don't understand it. Can't wrap my mind around it. There's so many different things about it that can be taught, so many things that we just kind of ran over real fast. Um, I, I understand that. But I want you to understand, giving up something in your life for the cause of Christ, you can't go wrong with trying that. You can't go wrong with putting God first in your life anytime, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I promise you, you get on your hands and knees, you get setting in your recline, you start talking to the Lord, As as a man speaketh to a verse, you call out to him as you're talking to your father. I don't understand. His spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. You don't, what I'm saying is, is if we don't try, if we don't step out a little further, we'll never see what happens over there. Now, I'm going to tell you some great things happened back here. Jesus was in the ship and taught the multitude. The multitude was taught the Word of God. Some great things happened, but that ship, Peter, 
needed another level in his growth. So many times we get stuck. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We get stagnant. We get numb. We become idle. And we just become motoring on our norm. And we're just doing church habitually. There's no joy. We start singing songs. We get tired of the same old songs. We start reading our Bible through the same pattern. We've been doing it for the 20 years now. And there's nothing new. There's not exciting. We, we, just, we just aren't seeing God do. You understand God is in the business of fruit producing? Not only is it individuals that's coming, but it's food in your life. It's growth in your life. It's that child that goes to the wall and they, and they mark the wall. Uh, it was Cole Peterson was telling me the other night, he said they quit using the wall. They started using a stick because they move houses so much. But I'm saying the reality is, as a child of God, we ought to be like that. There ought to be a measuring stick wherever I go at any point in my life. And when I get content, when I'm saying, and I'm not saying you're not supposed to be satisfied with where God has you, I'm talking about when I'm not reaching forth, pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, when I'm not reaching forth, when I'm not stepping out by faith, and I'm not trusting in Him, I become where before too long, I'm out here washing my nets, and my, it's all about my self-righteousness. It's about the public and in the center. Oh, I thank God that I'm not like them. And you can always find them. The reality of it is, we need to realize, be merciful unto me, a sinner. I'm talking about when we come before the holy throne of God. Notice if you would in verse number 5, it says, And Simon answering and said unto him, Master, we've toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, uh, we will let down the net. I believe there's some reasons why we don't move forward. I believe there's some reasons why we don't step out by faith. First of all, I want you to see that, uh, that perhaps we've been here and we said, you know what, I've already done that. I've already been there. I've got the t-shirt and the pennant. There's, there's no reason for me to step out or launch out a little further. I'm saying you'll never see what God... I'm saying there's, God's still a miracle-working God. God's still an amazing God. God still... Listen, you're never going to get to where you know everything there is to know about the Bible. It is a living book. You will spend the rest of eternity... Do you understand? Until you get the mind of Christ... We think, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've been preaching now for over 30 years, longer than that. I've been preaching a long, long time, and I'm saying there are still things, more things. Matter of fact, the more I get to know, the more I realize I didn't really understand or knew. See, for years, I believed God was happy with me based upon what I did. He would be satisfied. If I did enough, God would be happy. That's why I would launch out by faith because I wanted, to be, I wanted God to be happy with me. I didn't realize God was happy with me because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. The launching out of the deep was to increase my faith that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. It was for me. It wasn't necessarily for Him. It was for me. It was best for me to launch out by faith because I'm missing out. I'm alienated, as Paul would preach in the book of Ephesians, alienated from the life of God because of the blindness of my heart. It wasn't that I'm a bad Christian or a bad person. I'm just not realizing that God has more for me. I want to hunger more. I, Lord, I want to love you more. I, I want to serve you more. I want to do more. God, not because I want to make you happy with me, but because, God, I want other people to know what you have given me. I want them to know you. The reasons why behind everything begins to change. So watch with me. I believe, first of all, that we don't step out further because we've tried it and it wasn't that much fun. We failed. We hit the rocks. Somebody didn't treat us right. How many found out if you're going to do anything for God, there's going to be somebody out there that ain't going to treat you right? Listen, if you're going to serve God, get ready to be used. I promise you. 
I, I want to be used and be spent for the cause of Christ. If you're going to walk by faith and not by sight, get ready for people to use you. Satan doesn't fight the devil's crowd. What I'm saying is as long as you're sitting here, he'll let us sing our songs and have our worship and have our little BBSs and have our school. And I'm not saying those are all bad, but I'm saying the reality of it is he'll let us be here for 150,000 years and never go any further. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think Casey and Hope's experience in the mission field where God's called them has been exciting? Now I'm not saying everybody's called to that field. But I'm saying there was a day when they were sitting here comfortable. And they said, what would I, what'd you say, Spirit of God? Launch out into the deep? No, wait a minute. You meant have her, mount, him. You, you want them to go out into the deep, right? No, I want you. It's time, Peter. Notice very direct call. Peter, launch out into the deep. Simon Peter, Launch out a little further. God's not, do you understand? He, he doesn't use confusion here. It's not everybody's to go to Spain. Not everybody's to go to that. We're all called to go into all the world, but God's going to lead you to something and lead you a little further in your faith. And so they step out by faith. They start that thing called deputation, and they learn things by faith, and, they, and, and God does some amazing things in their life. If you got to spend any time with them at all, you'd find out their heart is no longer here. Their heart is there. Where God led them. That's where they want to be. That's why they want their passports that their mom's holding. But I'm saying, the reality, as you look into this tonight, what are you missing? Well, I can't wait till I get to heaven. To do what? I'm saying, well, Brother Kelly, don't you understand? It's the comfort. There'll be no more sorrow, no more sickness. And there's all kinds of benefits that we get. But to have the mind to, to work with God, to walk with God, to fellowship with God, to talk with God, shouldn't that grow in my Christian life? Perhaps as you hear the Lord say, now, cast out the nets. My nets are clean. It's already done. Our nets are clean. I, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, we're going to go out there in the deep and we're going to pray and the fish are going to jump in the boat. That's what happens. You know, you got those flying fish, and they're going to they're gonna fly up, and, they're gonna, and I know there's such a thing. But I'm saying the reality of it is, the type of fish that they were catching, the fishing of men, he said, I'm going to make you to become. I'm going to work in your life. I'm going to first start you off launching you a little off the ship. First of all, I'm going to say, follow me. You have to follow. You can't lead. You can't direct me. I'm God. Let me, let me lead. Follow me, and I'll make you to become Fishers of men. They left everything and they followed him. Now we find them back at those boats. We find them back at the ships and we find them. And he says, now, Peter, I want you to take that out and I want you to go a little further now. And I want you to go just a little off the land, a little off the safety of the shore, a little off of walking with me and fellowshipping with me and seeing the miracles. And I want you to go a little further. Now I'm going to go deeper. Continual growth in our Christian walk. There ought to be continual growth. You say, what's this have to do with prayer? Because as God brought me through this in my life, I had to come to the realization that I was so used to my nets being clean in prayer. I'm saying that my prayer became much like that little ship. It just become ritualistic. And I know maybe we don't say to say seven words 17 times, and we and I, I know we're not running through the, and we don't, but I'm saying the reality is if we'd be honest and you write out your prayer, just I challenge you, look at your prayer life and how ritualistic it has become. Church services become ritualistic. And I'm not saying God doesn't do things decently in order. God has structure to everything. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm talking lifeless. Is your prayer more about checking it off? It's verse to communicating with the Holy God. Fellowshipping with Him. Not only around His Word, but in praise. Is it a time that I get to spend with Him? I'm saying, is it exciting? 
If it's not, why? Shouldn't I, shouldn't I ask my why isn't my prayer life exciting? Why is prayer boring? Why, when we say we have a prayer service, there's only there's two. You say you're going to have a mission conference. People don't like because you're going to ask for money, and then prayer. Let's have a time of prayer. Oh man, I hope he don't pray. Why? Well, he's going to pray forever. And if he prays forever, I, I'm, I'm saying, why is it? I was in setting in Fort Dodge, Iowa, and Marvin Smith was t- preaching, and and um, and then Saturday night we went to their prayer meeting night, and over here was a group of people that was praying, and over back there was a group of people that was praying, and over there was a people was a group of people that was praying. Every Saturday night I get a text from Marvin Smith and some of their people saying, "We're praying for you, preacher." And and I thought, boy, and, and over a hundred prayer meetings that church has during the course of the week. Now they're not saying that to brag. I'm saying that tonight. To say, boy, that was challenging to me. Do we pray? Or are we stepping out a little further? If I was to say tonight, I would I believe God's leading us to a 24-hour prayer service. I'm talking about around the clock, 24 hours. I'm going to ask you to give up an hour. Do you think we could fill a clock? People that would sincerely pray for the hour? I'm saying the reality of it is, if I said, you know, we're going to take on, I believe God wants to do something abundantly above and beyond. We have a ladies retreat here just in a few weeks. And it's not just the ladies getting away from the husbands, which I know that's exciting. It's not just about the singing and the teaching. And our ladies are putting together some devotional books and stuff. It's, It's pretty awesome what they're doing. But could you imagine if as our wives get up and stand and they begin to teach other women how to love their husbands, to be keepers of the home, time management, there's all kinds of things. What if they knew behind them was the power of prayer? Oftentimes, I'll ask you, listen, I'm going to be preaching at camp, and could you be praying at 7 o'clock? And several of you have volunteered to pray right at 7 o'clock when I'm going to be preaching. And I, and I can't tell you the, the power that comes. It's an amazing thing. Would we be willing to go a little further and let down our nets? Who do you know right now that needs to be saved? Sat with a man today, and I talked with him. We talked a little bit about church. His comment at the end of it, he said, so what time do you start tonight? I was kind of shocked that he was interested in what time we start. Because during the whole conversation, he really wanted nothing to do with what I was offering. I want you to understand some things. So many times I, I get in my boat and I get out there and I, and, and I, and I think, well, we've, 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 we've toiled. We've tried to reach Seward. I've invited him 100 times. What if you get to heaven it was the 101 time? You just stop short. You say, what would it look like? I believe we find it in this passage. Jesus said, let down your nets. And Peter said, okay, at thy word, I'm going to do it. Okay, guilted into it, God. I'll let down a net. And he drops singular a net. You guys know the rest of the story. The fish. I mean, the fish. Amount of fish is now breaking the net. See what's happening? I wonder what would have happened if they would have just done it Jesus' way. Matter of fact, you find out in that story, there's some other guys out there in another boat. Hey, come help us. 
One net fills both ships until they're about to sink. It's got all kinds of pictures there, I believe. It shows us the vessels. And what happens is, is people that belong in one church are now in another church, and, and people that should be in this net are, are, are over here, and, and, and both of them, they're not prospering because God puts a body together. And so what happens... Could, did you ever read the story and think, now I wonder if they would have just included Jesus. I wonder if things would have been different. What if a Peter would have said, Lord, I can't believe, I'm astonished. And it says he is later. At the drought of fishes, the amazing amount, the abundance above and beyond, you told me to launch out of the deep, and I launched out of the deep, and here I said to the deep, I only let out one net. And now the net's being broke. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I disobeyed. I wonder if God could have made. No, instead, we do just like Peter did. Instead of looking to Jesus at that time, we look to other men. We want, we want other men's help. We miss out on what Jesus could have done. You say, what could have Jesus done? He could have made them fish walk on their tails. Who knows? We'll never get to see it. Just like we'll never get to see what God wanted to do. Because we're... Well, could God really through prayer? You mean, preacher, as you were preaching that, 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 that James would talk about the prayer of the elders revealing things? Are you talking about the reality that there could be such a powerful prayer life that it's the effectual fervency of a prayer that availeth much? Are we withholding what God could do because we're seeking other man's ships? Even though we launched out, now we're looking at other men and what they as burst of trusting in God. I'm talking about the reality of prayer in our life. How is it that we've gone a little deeper? I believe that the Bible says in verse number 6, it says, and when they had done, this one they has done, uh, they, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned to their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. I believe in a time of trouble, so many times we look for other men instead of looking to the Savior. What could have Jesus done? What would have Jesus done? I pastored Rivers of Joy Baptist Church in Minford, Ohio for six years. I grew up in that same area. And for many of the years, we would drive 19 miles to Portsmouth Baptist Church. It was just over the hill from Rivers of Joy Baptist Church. In my teenage years, we went to a little church just three miles up the road called Twin Valley. So if you started right now going down the road from where Rivers of Joy Baptist Church, it's set here, right out the door, you could throw a rock across the highway And there's Grace Baptist Church right there. Down the road, less than a mile, is now Minford Bible Baptist Church. Up the road, less than three miles, Twin Valley Baptist Church. Less than eight miles, up on your left-hand side, is Shawnee Hills. Right behind Shawnee Hills is Berean Baptist Church. Within four miles from that is Calvary Baptist Church. If you back up and you go over Rosemount Hill, there's the church I was saved. It's Portsmouth Baptist Church. And that's, uh, listen, if you go this way, you go out here and, and there, there's, there's the Jigs Frazies Church. I don't remember the name of it. And you go two miles down the road from that, there's another church. You go this way down the road, and I'm saying there's, there's more ships in that water. And you know what they're doing? And I pastored there for a lot of years. I'm not talking bad about them. A long time ago, when I was just a kid, there was the one over here, Portsmouth Baptist Church. 
They quit going out to the deep. They quit stretching forth. And now they all began to do, and they began to, and, and what happens is, is this church right now is lifeless. There's one church in Minford that is, that is growing, but I understand it's a performance-based Christianity, so they have to to make God happy. I'm talking about this church has truth, but this church, instead of preaching truth, instead of preaching the truth, they're, they're living a lie, and, and they're just so content with being in their boat, they, they haven't brought a soul to Christ. They haven't let down a net in years. They quit having outreaches. They quit telling, I mean, they quit doing everything they could do to, to get out in the boat. And I'm going to tell you, Twin Valley Baptist Church is where my dad was called to be a missionary to Alaska. That church at one time was packed. I'm talking about every Saturday, us teenagers, we'd go out. I drove a bus route at 16 years of age, back when you could do that at 16 years of age. And I'm just saying, they were excited and they, they wanted to bring, and they wanted, today, you could shoot a gun and not hit anybody. Last time I preached there, I'm talking the, the place used to be seats, 250, 300 people. There was nobody. What happened? What happened? That's not counting the churches that now are, you know, little grocery stores or teen activity places. They're no longer even churches. What happened? Got content. Quit growing. I don't want my prayer life. I'm 54 years old, and when I'm 74 years old, I still want a fervency of prayer. I still want a desire to get in touch with God. I still want a heartbeat for the lost. I, I, I don't want to just write out. Peter later in his ministry would walk on the water. Remember the story of Matthew 14? He learned a great lesson that day at the fishes. You say, what did he learn? This time, you remember, he jumps off. He, he can swim the shore. He's able to swim. He's been a fisherman his whole life. But this time, he's walking on the water and he's going to Jesus. There's men that have the ability to row, row, row their boat to help him in the time of a storm. At any moment, he could have turned around and said, Guys, help me, I'm sinking. But he doesn't say that. He learned his lesson. When I called for men's help, the ships were sinking. But when I called for His help and I said, Lord Jesus, save me, He reached out His hand, He lifted me up, and we walked on the water together. The old Peter, back before his growth, would have cried for the men. You say, how do you know that? Because he did it before. Creature or habit. Many times, he'll go, I'll go fishing. He, he, that's just who he is. That's what he's done his whole life. As Drew was preaching on that Sunday night, you remember the story. He had some dads. The dads let these boys go a little further with Jesus. And the dads stayed in the family business. Kind of an amazing story if you think about it. Ships are still working here. There were some people that stayed behind and some dads that were willing to do the work. And, and, and I, I think it's an amazing thing. But understand, we all have to be in our place. Those dads had to step out by faith. Boys, you're my only... Hey, that's my workers. They went. John's dad didn't say, oh, the sons of Zebedee? Is that, what did Zebedee say? Somebody had taught them as the rabbi comes by and he casts his cloak upon you and he says, follow me. It's time to go. They had already flunked the 12-year-old test. They were going to be fishermen the rest of their life. And God said, I want you to go a little further. Speaking with a man a while back who was a doctor, been to college, could have made 
I mean, really, the money he could have made as a doctor supporting missions in a man's mind would make you think, do you understand how many people you could send to the field if you just stayed and worked? But God said, no, I want you to launch out into the deep. He left all of his credentials. He left everything behind. Now, he still works in the mission field. I'm saying he's, what God has done is amazingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Would I be willing? I'm telling you, you've got to have a prayer life. I want you to see tonight, they felt, and the Bible says in verse number 8, the Bible says in, when Simon Peter saw this, he saw the fish, he saw the ships sinking, he, he saw his pride as a fisherman, remember? I've fished all night, I've toiled all night. He, he saw that he, was, he had a disobedient heart. He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at, that, at all that were with him. I'm talking about the reality. When's the last time that you were involved in prayer, you were involved in where, where God worked and you saw that it was the power of God, the direction of God, the hand of God, the blessing of God, and, and, and it humbled you. Humbled you. Here's the deal. The closer you get to the light, the more it's going to expose the flaws in this vessel. The closer I get to Jesus, the more I realize it must be Him. I must die. He must increase, and I must decrease. But as long as we're back here, I can feel pretty good. Read my Bible today, got through my devotions, I, 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 I went to church faithfully, I, I give the missions, I went on, and I've been doing this now for five years and 10 years and 20 years. And now I'm just going through the motion, waiting for Jesus to come. Heather and I were in Hawaii and, uh, I don't remember exactly what we were doing, but there was like 800 people. I don't know what 800, 40, maybe 20. Evangelistically speaking, 800 people. But there were all these old people. They were probably our age, but old people. And they were lined up. And it was just like, we, we were talking to them and they, it was just like, yeah, I, I used to do this and I used to do that and I used to do this and that. They're not these old people, because if you watch this old people, he works harder than most young people. I'm saying these people were just said, yeah, I retired. Don't really have much to do in life. Kids don't come. I mean, horrible stories. Next guy. And they were just like they're waiting. Is it my turn yet? Is it my turn yet? When do I get to die? Man, I don't want to be doing that. I'm not saying that I can do what I'm doing here the rest of my life. But I'm saying that when I get to the end of my life, I want to be further than right here. I don't want it to be a shock. Oh, I haven't heard from you in a while, Kelly. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, son. Come on in. Oh, yeah. I haven't called you. What if I don't call my mom every week? She's disappointed. I'm disappointed. I want to know how she's doing. And, and, and you, you understand, that's an earthly relationship. If I only pray and only in my Bible on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and I only pray over my food, in the morning for a minute, and my prayer life hasn't grown? Am I missing out? My whole thought on this is I don't want you to miss out on what God has for you. We're going to be closing tonight, but I wanted to give you a couple more verses. And the Bible said this, as he had amazement, that they're astonished. It was, and he was amazement at all the fishes that they had taken. The Bible says, And so also that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon, 
And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch what? Men. And what's amazing about Peter's life, he, he never again, he never again limits what God can do. He, he limits and, and he has to grow, but he grows. And I said, I got you to this point. Did you learn the lesson? In closing, what's the last lesson that he taught you? By faith, by prayer, by obedience. And if it's been a long time since you learned anything, is it that he's quit teaching? Or is it that we've just been washing our nets and they're clean? You know, if I go out there and I, Lord, I've toiled all night. I've a long time caught nothing. Lord, we've toiled and we're talking, we're professional fishermen. There's no fish out there. Let down your nets. I've picked up the strangers on the side of the road. I've invited those people like you talk about, preacher. And I I went out and and reached out as we talked the other day about to the unlovelies and and the people that that everybody else would ignore. I've, I've tried to invest in their life and it just didn't work. Didn't work. Hmm problem is, is we plant our corn and then go pluck up the seed before it can grow. Let let God do His part. The thing is, is when you're speaking with Him and He's speaking with you and you know it's a God thing, just do it. Who is that uncircumcised Philistine? What? We're not going to bow. God said not to. Fiery furnace? Worst could happen. It's the worst. Father, we love you tonight and thank you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you for your truth. Help us, Lord, to see the reality tonight that you have more, more. Lord, I thank you the old songwriter who would write the song after many years of faithfulness. They wanted to hear more about Jesus. Lord, our desire to grow, our desire to step out by faith and walk by faith and not by sight. Our desire tonight in our prayer life to stretch ourselves, to go a little further than we've gone before, to launch out into the deep, to be obedient. It's been so long. Lord, so many times we get so complacent and so numbed it down. Lord, Lord, would you do what only you could do in the hearts and lives of every individual sitting in this room tonight? God, would you work on them, Lord? Show them the area, the person, the place. Lord, the next step in their growth, their journey. Lord, as we began this, we talked about every one of us are living a journey. We're living a life, and God, we, we're writing the story of our faith growth. God, help us, Lord, to be who it is that you would have us to be for your glory, for your name's sake. We love you and praise your holy name. Amen. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.